right, let's talk about the app really quickly. The app is really simple to use. Um, I'm gonna show you the iPhone app because that's what I have, but that Android app is really similar to it and it works very, very um, similarly. So you do need to get logged in like you do for the website. And then um, you are going to tap the observe button, which is over here. And that will bring you into the uploader. So the uploader for this one looks like this. You can only upload one observation at a time on the app. And there is no way to bulk upload anything. So it's <clears throat> really great if you're out in the field and you want to go ahead and upload those sightings right when you're there. Um, there's reasons you might want to do that. Uh, one of the reasons is that this location will fill in automatically. Um, and so it's really easy to do these out in the field. But if you're taking pictures off your phone that you've taken earlier in the day, um, it's just a little bit more tricky because you've got to fill in all this information one by one. So you can see this picture of this little green anole up here. And you're going to go ahead and do the same kinds of things that we did on the website. So you need to type in what you think it is. I know this is a green anole. And so you'll type it in. You'll see the, um, the name up at the top. Go ahead and click on that. And then it will um, put the, whoop, not sure where the species name went there. Normally it would pop up right there. Um, grab the wrong screenshot there. Um, so you'll have your, your picture, your uh, species name, whatever you happen to know for that species. Uh, you'll need to go ahead and put your location in. If you're using your phone and you have the GPS turned on, it will automatically tag your photo wherever you took it. And so this observation here, um, or this part of this uh, observation will be filled in automatically. I personally don't like everyone knowing every single place I've ever taken a photo, so I turn that off on my phone. And so I do have to go in and choose the locations every time. Um, for this one, it's a little tricky because you can't search for a site. Uh, you can't search by address. You have to just scroll through the map to find the site that you were at. And so um, when I was at Blue Jay Point yesterday, um, that's a ways from my house. So I usually just tap on the little um, find me button down in the corner. And uh, this one here will take you to wherever you're standing at that particular moment. And then I follow the roads um, over to the park and um, tell it that I found it right outside of their education center there. It does involve a lot of pinching and zooming and sliding around to find your site. And if you're at a place that you're not quite as familiar with and you're not exactly sure how you got there, it can be just a little tricky. Uh, again, it's putting this kind of box around it. This is as far as you can zoom in on the app. So you can't be super specific about where you saw things. Like I saw this anole like right here. Um, and so I could narrow it down a little bit more, but it won't let me on the app. But you can zoom in or zoom out as far as you need to to show the area that you found it in. All right. Um, the last thing I want to talk about here is the uh, geo privacy option. Now, if you don't want every single person in the world who ever looks at iNaturalist to figure out exactly where you took the photo, you do have an option to hide that information a little bit. Um, if you say open here, everyone is going to be able to see the exact point that you um, took the picture. And I only mention it because if you are at home and you take a lot of pictures at home, it's really easy to tell where you live on iNaturalist. Um, it's also easy to follow people around a little bit on iNaturalist. So you can see that someone lives you know, here and they go to these parks a lot uh, and they go to this other place a lot. Uh, so you can kind of track people a little bit. So just be aware that there are some options here. If you choose obscured, it will put a random five um, mile diameter circle around your sighting. And so it'll just say to the rest of the world, you'll still be able to see exactly where you took it. But the rest of the world will only be able to see that within that five mile circle, there, um, th this observation occurred. And so um, obscured lets people see kind of the rough area that it's in, but takes away the detail of exactly where it was um, observed. Private hides it from everyone. And so you can still see your sightings and where you saw them, but no one else can. And so just remember that these options are here, um, and I would encourage you to use them. Not many people do, um, but they're there and they're available if you need them. All right. Uh, and then actually I lied, there's one more thing. You do want to choose your projects. It's going to work almost exactly the same way that the app does. Uh, click on projects. It will bring you to your list of projects. Then you're just going to click in the empty space next to the little slider bar there uh, to select it. 
and you will um, be taken back to this observation page once you hit submit. Uh, there is one more step on the app that you have to do, which is clicking this button up here um, that will actually upload your sightings. Now, the really great thing about this particular button is that it lets people um, collect data out in the field without any cell signal or any sort of connection to Wi-Fi. You can collect a whole lot of data without using any of your, your phone's data, then get back to civilization, click that button, and upload them all at once. And so if you're out in the field and you have a bad signal or no signal, you can still collect the data and upload it later. But you do have to collect, uh, click on that button, and then you'll see your observation pop up at the top of your list. All right. There are a few things you can do on iNaturalist that the um, app makes really easy. Uh, it will put these little um, conversation bubbles next to your observations. This says that someone either made a comment or they added an observation to your, your sighting. And so um, for this eastern tent caterpillar, this was another person that agreed with my identification on that particular um, species. And then this um, five, um, or five, uh, box here. It's um, a couple of um, shared identifications and then a couple of comments about the photo that I took specifically uh, for that one. And so there's um, some ways you can talk to other people through the app by commenting on um, images. And the app makes it really easy to be able to see when you've got new, me new messages. Um, you can also help other people identify things. So if you know a lot about a group and you want to help other people learn more about that group, uh, you can click this Explore button, whoop, uh, and you can uh, look through by species, by area. There's a lot of different ways to search through the information and um, share the identifications that you know with people who might know less than you do.